good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our October Jim Wood Speaker Series. And before I forget, there will not be a speaker for November, December, and January. Only because it's too busy with holidays. January is too busy with the new semester. So we will start again in February, February, March, and April. And when I finish that, I'll send out the flyer for the whole spring. Now we will have Mr. Sanford introduce, Mr. Dennis introduce <laughs> our speaker. But remember, we've got a drawing. Everybody have a ticket? You got to be in it to win it? If you don't have a ticket, go to the door and get a ticket, okay? So we've got some good giveaways. We've got a weekend with Mr. Dennis. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <down there>. okay. <laughs> so you have to rush him to the door and get it. Right? <laughs> Three days, two nights in Fayetteville. <laughs> <laughs> and babysitting the booth. That's right. <laughs> All right, we're going to start the show, so we'll okay. on All right, fair. Thank you. All right, good evening. Mm -hmm. right, I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker, Mrs. Uh, Joycelyn Sumter. Uh, she is a, she's a native of, of Evergreen, Alabama, which is a very large city in southern Alabama. <laughs> okay, and she is a, she's an alum of University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa, with Roll Tide. Okay. She's been, she's been, been, a, been a native of um, <laughs> native of Atlanta for. <laughs> what about your warning? They said war eagle too. Oh, 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 I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard a war eagle come out here anyway. <laughs> so she's been a, been a resident of Atlanta for many many years. She has worked in various various capacities for the Turner Network, and she's currently a director of. Um, distribution you know, operations for the Weather Channel. So I'm going to turn it over to her and she is going to dazzle you. Okay, thank you. I don't know about the dazzle part, but I might shock you more than anything. <laughs> Doing a mic check. Doing a mic check. Okay. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay, the one thing that you need to know about me is I am going to move around, touch a few people on the shoulder. Everybody's like, oh, dang, I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> and, you know, we're just going to have conversation because <laughs> that's what I want to do. I want to have conversation. I want you to get your questions asked. I will answer them to the best of my ability. If I don't know the answer, we'll keep moving. So... All right, let's get started. Um, as Sanford said, you know, I work for the Weather Channel now. I've been there for 14 years. I am going to go ahead and just show you this, and we're going to move through it real quickly. I'm going to give you, this is what I do at the Weather Channel. It's a lot of words, but let me just tell you what I do. I handle budgeting, anything dealing with the finances for my department. I am involved in it. So I say that to you because a lot of times, we don't realize how we touch the bottom line of a company. So if you're in any capacity in any company, you need to know where you are and how you touch that bottom line. So I handle all of the revenue and expense budgets, even the forecasting, anything dealing with distribution contracts. And well, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Also, I am very good at helping my team with career development and growth opportunities. Also, um, I'm responsible for system management, which is a part of our area where we house all of our affiliate information for our affiliates, like DirecTV, Comcast, Cox. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, I went to the University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Just, thank you. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Um, and, and I used to work there before I um, went to Turner Broadcasting. I was there for a very long time and then I'm now at the Weather Channel and I've been there for 14 years. So um, just all of the other little personal stuff, just to tell you a little bit more about me education wise, I just recently finished um, NAMIC, which is a cable industry organization. NAMIC stands for National Association of Multi-Ethnicities in Communications. They have an executive leadership development program. It costs about 20 grand that your company sponsors you to go to. I was very fortunate this time for my boss to sponsor me there. I went to the University of Virginia, the Darden Business School, and I completed that certificate. And it's 
a long eight months. So I um, hadn't been in school a long time, so that was a little difficult for me, but I made it through. Other certifications you can see that I've gotten from William and Mary College and just other personal stuff. I enjoy all kinds of sports, cooking, my friends. Uh, my daughter's a senior in high school. She's getting ready to go to Wake Forest. And I am a diehard soccer mom. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let me tell you about the Weather Channel. At the Weather Channel, does anybody have any questions about my background? Because you may need to be tested on it later. I don't know. That's why I changed the screen real quick. No questions? All right. Let me tell you about the Weather Channel. Now, the Weather Channel is like one of the coolest companies to work for, and I'll tell you why. I used to work for Turner Broadcasting, and that's more of a news and entertainment type company, because you can either be on the news side or you'll be on the entertainment side. At the Weather Channel, it's really interesting because here are the, we call it the four S's of the weather company because we concentrate on services, safety, science, and stories, the four S's. Now let me tell you a little bit about each one of them. When we talk about services, we're talking about, what do we do? Weather, right? That's a, somebody's phone on? Is your phone on? What? Mute it. I'm going to come back and touch you on the shoulder. I'm going to call her out. She's going to answer some questions. It's perfectly fine. Okay, at the Weather Channel, we do weather. We wake up with the weather, we go to bed with the weather. But weather touches you every single day of your life. Am I right? Okay, everything you do. How many people check the weather before you leave in the morning? Everybody in the room almost. Right. When you're traveling, how many of you check the weather in, the, in your destination? Right. So you see my point. Weather affects everything that you do. Okay? When we talk about safety, we're talking about how you can protect yourself. Sunscreen. How many of you go to the beach and the last thing you think about is putting on sunscreen? Right. You don't think about sunscreen? <laughs> really? OK. I'm good with it. I'm just saying. About 15 years from now, it might be a different story. <laughs> but you protect yourself from the weather. When it rains, what do you do? You wear a raincoat, right? When it snow, you put on a heavier coat, right? The, the whole gamut. So weather touches everything you do. When we talk about science, it's meteorology. We predict, well, okay, let me just say, we estimate what the forecast is gonna be. You keep laughing. I'm not lying, I'm really not lying. Sometimes we got it right, sometimes we don't. But it's, it's just an estimate. It's just like watching WSB or Channel 11, XIA, any of those. It's just an estimate, right? Okay. When we talk about stories, how many of you watch the Weather Channel? Let's just go there. I'm going to need to see more hands. All right. So you watch some of the shows. I'm not a favorite of Fat Man in the Woods. Okay. But they have stories to tell. And that's what we do. We go out and seek real people who have real stories that are impacted by the weather. Okay. We good on that? Questions? And you guys are going to have to talk because I'm going to come around and touch some people on the shoulder. So beware. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let you read this before I start talking. How many of you want to stay with your parents forever? <coughs> oh, I ain't seen no hands go up. Y'all want to stay with your parents forever? And ever? And ever? Wow, okay, this is a first. Now, my 18-year-old was in here. She'd be like, I don't want to stay with them forever. No, I want to leave yesterday. But we're going to keep it moving. Okay, so at the end of the day, as a parent, I want you out the house too. Okay? 
So now that we got that squared away, and I'm, I'm gonna need y'all to smile when I look at you. Something, I need to feel something, okay? We good? I'm just gonna start calling on people. We good in the pink sweater? Okay, all right. We good in the black top? We good? Okay, all right, okay. Now, what I wanna talk to you, and the reason why I'm showing you this picture is, these two pictures, is because the reason why you're in school is you want to ultimately get a job. As a parent, we want you to keep your job, okay? And we also want you to make your job your career. And you can move from one company to another, but we want you to make your job a career, okay? Now, how many of you already know what your major is? You're getting ready to graduate, getting close. I don't see a lot of hands going up, so we have a lot of indecisive people. Okay, I need a brother to raise them. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, all right, now for the people who didn't raise your hand, in the braids, what you want to do? Oh, that'll be you. Okay, so you know what you want to do. Your hand didn't go up. That's why I asked that question. Okay, I'm watching you. Okay. All right. So, you need to know where you're going, and this step in college is going to get you there. Now, how many of you work part-time or full-time or whatever? Okay, this is good. Let me ask you this question. Do you think you have, for those who don't work, not the people who are working already, but for those who don't work, do you think you have the skills right now to get the job that you want from your major? No? Okay. For those who are working, what do you have to say to that? Do you think in your, first of all, in your current job, is it the job that you want to have five years from now? Okay, I thought I would get a response. So, for the job that you want when you finish school, what do you think the number one skill set is that you need? That hiring managers look for when they are hiring. I hire people, there's one thing that I look for. Anybody, who said it? Communication, Communication skills. What do we mean by that? Give me another one. Yes. Writing. All right. Somebody else. Listening, which is what people forget sometimes. If you talk a lot. <coughs> I interviewed a young lady one recently within the last year. First of all, she had a 14 page resume. Yeah, that was a deal breaker. And I couldn't even interview her because she talked too much. Yeah, that didn't go over very well. Five minutes, she had to go. Yeah. So, listening is very important. What other skills do you think? Critical thinking. Ooh, somebody said it. Critical thinking, leadership, some others. Yes, some others. Over here. Come on, I need this side to answer some questions. Let me tell you, I knew a girl that interviewed, and one of the questions I ask when I interview people, I ask you, because we use Excel a lot, because I deal with the budget, so I need people who have Excel skills. I said on a scale of one to 10, tell me where you are in Excel. What level? I'm an eight. I said, okay, so that means you know how to do uh, pivot tables, <laughs> macros, and she was like, oh, I don't even know what that is. And I said, then you're not an eight. Because if you're an eight, that means you're good. I said, what do you know how to do? Well, I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And I'm like, isn't that level one? <laughs> right, she, five minutes, she was out. Okay, so here's my point to you. These are critical entry level business skills that you need in any job. You see what number one is. So out of all those things that you guys were yelling out, do you see them up there? 
If you can't talk to people and express yourself clearly, we have a problem. We have a problem because that's you're interviewing. If you can't ask for the job in an interview, you're not going to make it. I give you five minutes to screw it up, and then you're out. Okay? Um, what about other being with being able to talk to other team members don't you think you have to do that especially if you work in a group yes. that's important too all right what about positive attitude what do we think that means we're going to get down to that in just a second but absolutely give me some more Encourage others. Give me another one. Accept constructive criticism. Yes, ma'am. It's up there. But, yeah, but that's part of it. Give me another one. The ability to handle stress. It's up there. Yes, give me another one. Absolutely. Positivity is contagious. You need to remember that. If you're always positive and you work with people who are Debbie Downers. You gotta constantly be the person to go, you know what, we're gonna keep it positive today because that vibe is not working for us. You've gotta be that person. And trust and believe, by you doing that, that shows, one, your manager, that you're a leader and not a follower. And that's important to help you progress in your careers. How many of you believe that? Okay. All right, adaptability and flexibility. What do you think that means? Somebody said it a second ago. Being able to adjust to change and quickly because the way that our economy is working now, if you are a person who cannot adjust based on the environment that you're in quickly, you're gonna be left behind. Companies. You just heard about the big layoff at Turner Broadcasting, right? Okay, it's 15, 1,500 people. It's not because they weren't competent. The company is changing. That's a lot of people, a lot of people. We've even had it at the Weather Channel. It's a lot of people, and it, it's nothing personal against you. That's why you've got to have these skills to be able to go from one company to the other, okay? Uh, the next one, teamwork and collaboration. A lot of people don't think about this. If you can't work in a team using that positive attitude, you're not going to be successful because every company these days have projects. Projects take teams. Teams work collaboratively. So you've got to be able to communicate with one another. I'm not saying you have to agree, but you can uh, disagree and still walk away smiling. I'm, I'm a fighter in a meeting. I work with a lot of men. <laughs> I love y'all. And I work with a lot of men in IT. Oh. Okay, so you, okay. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. I love them, but I love to hate them. But guess what? We can, we can get it done. We can sit in there and we will go back and forth and I'll say, you know what? I think we need to agree to disagree. Now, what happens is we have to find a common ground because at the end of the day, we are all working towards a common goal. And so we have to figure out how we're gonna get there. And if I have to bend, I do it a little bit and I make them bend a little bit, and then we get there. But it's, it's a struggle sometimes, but you gotta know how to fight through it. And having that positive attitude, I mean, we joke, laugh, you know, I'll throw some curse words across the room, they throw them back, and you know, we get it done. Because we know we have to work it out. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's touching that revenue, so everybody wants to keep their job. That's just the way it is, okay? What's the next one? Problem solving. 
This is one attribute that people don't really think about. And I need you to think about it. And here's why. You need to be able to articulate a business problem. Because everybody in here is a business major. Do we have anybody that's not a business major? What are you? I do. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> what are you? Healthcare management. I saw some hands up here. What? Homeland what here? Security and Homeland Security. I'm gonna go on over here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hands over here. Chemistry. Chemistry. Okay. All right. What else? Anybody else? Everybody else business majors? Okay. All right. It doesn't matter what area you still have to be able to do these things. You need to be able to articulate what the problem is. This is what managers look for. When you articulate the problem, you need to say things like, this is what I feel the problem is, this is how I think we should go about solving the problem, and then you need to also make a recommendation on how to solve the problem. That's what business managers look for. So it's not, it's not okay just to say, well, you know, um, the door should be brown. What does that mean? It means nothing. Managers look for people who are in there, hey, here's what the problem is. Here is how I think we should go about doing it. And it will take X number of time to do it. That's what managers look for. And I'm telling you, if you do that, that will set you apart from any other candidate that comes through. And most people don't think just because you're a college student and you're interviewing, when you're interviewing, you're doing the same thing. You have to sell yourself in that interview. You have to articulate why you are the best candidate. What do you have to offer me to make me want to hire you? That's what you're doing, right? You got to know how to do that. Okay? Questions on that? Because that is the one attribute that people don't think about, and you need to know that that's what we're looking for. Questions? All right, let's keep moving. All right, this is the one that gets a lot of people in trouble. Strong work ethic. What's your name, young man? William. William. William comes to work every day. He is the happiest person in the world. William is always sitting at the water cooler, just chatting, talking to everybody. He has so much work to do, he doesn't even know where to start. But he's nice. Guess what? William's not going to be there long <laughs> because William likes to socialize and he doesn't like to work. That's not going to work. I'm going to need you to work, William. <laughs> you need to have strong work ethic when you get a job. My mother used to tell me, if you are a street cleaner, you need to be the best street cleaner in the world. Same philosophy. If you're an analyst, you're a manager, vice president, president, you still need to be the best that you can be. Because other people are looking up to you. And if they see you're a slacker, they're going to slack. Now, I believe in having fun, and my team will tell you, I love to have fun. Now, I am a comedian. <clears throat> Um, don't nobody know me, but I like having fun. But here's the deal. I know when to cut it off, and I know when to pop back into work mode. But work should be fun for you, and that's what I make it with my team. It's fun, but we get it done. And I have a high-performing team. I have three people on my team, and they are high performers. Okay? Questions on that? I see a hand. Okay, you need to be talking to the manager. Now, for me, I know the skill set of everybody on my team. And if one person is not doing what they need to be doing, I'm having conversation with them. And that's not going to go on very long. It's either you shape up or I need to find a replacement. 
That, those are the conversations that are happening these days. People are not wasting time trying to, you know, do a whole lot of coaching and motivating. You do that the first six months to a year. And if you know, in 30 days, we had a guy on our team, he was in sales. Interviewed well. The person that showed up for the job day one, we were like, he must have a twin. Because <laughs> this is not the guy they interviewed. He had a twin for 30 days. We kept saying, where's that guy to interview? He fooled four people. It was a group interview. There was a VP, general counsel, myself, and a salesperson. He fooled all of us. You know what he did? I'm gonna tell you a secret, and I have to kill you if it gets out of this room. <laughs> the job description that we had for the role, he put that in his resume. Talk about a deal breaker. Because we were trying to figure out what happened to the guy that interviewed and the guy that showed up. He put it in his resume. He got fired. He was there for about 30 days. He got fired. I'm telling you, managers are not putting up with that. When you come in, you better come in with the mindset that you are there to work and you're there to do good work. Okay? Now that's how we do it at the Weather Channel. All right, moving on to the next one. The ability to accept constructive criticism and learn from it. I don't even think I need to say anything to that. Do I? It's pretty, it's pretty clear, right? If you can't accept somebody saying to you, tell me your name. Francina. Francina, I need you to work on your Excel skills. Because you told me you were an eight. <laughs> right now you're operating at a four. I'm going to need you to tighten up. I'm going to give you three weeks to get it together. Now, I told you what I needed. In three weeks, if it's not there, we're going to have a different conversation. Because you didn't learn from it. That's clear, right? All right, we're going to keep moving. Critical observation. Now, what do you think this means? This right here is a career bust or a plus. Does anybody have any idea what it means? Kind of, sort of. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. If you are given some data, let's just say you've been asked to do some research, and you go and collect the data, and you just hand it to your boss. Do you think that's going to be effective? No. Absolutely not. You know why? Because you didn't look at the data, you didn't analyze the data, you didn't summarize the data, and you didn't make a recommendation from the data. And you also didn't tell them that I believe that this is the best data there is. That's critical observation. Taking information, analyzing it, making a recommendation, and standing behind your thought process that this is the best data there is. We don't do that. I say we, I'm talking about all of us. We don't do that. We just do exactly what we're told. This is how you go above and beyond. This is how you get good ratings when it comes down to getting promotions, bonuses, merit increases. If you don't know how, to, if you're always the person that goes, Joycelyn, here's the information you asked me for. And I'm going, oh, OK, now I got to take it and do what I need to do with it because you didn't do it. But then, since you're a professor, I won't touch you. <laughs> this young man right here about to go to sleep. What's your name? Travis. Travis. Yes, ma'am. Travis, are you trying to go to sleep on me? No, ma'am. OK, I didn't think so. <laughs> if Travis gives me information and Travis says, Joycelyn, here's the information. And here's a summary of 
what I think about this information and here's my recommendation because I think this is the best data that you have for this project. I'm looking at Travis. I, it is Travis, right? When it comes time for merit increases, promotions, that's a mental note for me because he went above and beyond. Does that make sense to you? I'm, I'm trying, I'm giving y'all a secret on how to get promoted real quick before you even start it. All right, also, managers love people like Travis who do that extra step. If you do what I just said, I'm telling you, you're gonna be successful. All right, next one, conflict resolution. What do we think this means? Y'all know, because you do it in class. What does it mean? I heard somebody over here. Making it a win-win, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And in that, you have to be able to persuade most times, get somebody to come on over to your side, or negotiate. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. Then you come to that solution. Make sense? Does that, does everybody, you see where I'm going with this? How many people want to be hired by the Weather Channel tomorrow? <laughs> oh, I see you have three, four, five hands up. All right, okay. Now, here's a deal breaker. Time management. We're gonna go back to William again. William likes hanging out at the cooler. <laughs> at the coffee machine. He know everybody on the floor because he meet him at the coffee machine. When are you going to get your work done? <laughs> right. I'm going to need to have a conversation with you. We're going to need to do some coaching, have some conversation. Time management is, oh boy, I, t I can't even tell you how critical it is for you to come in and be able to get your work organized, prioritize what needs to be done, and by when. You need to be able to multitask. If you can't do those things, you're of no value to me because we have too many moving targets. We've got TV shows going, we've got revenue budget due, we've got um, IT wanting to install some new software that's irrelevant to us. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but You've got to be able to multitask. I say that jokingly, but IT guys are my best friends. Believe that. Questions on that? Please ask me, because I got an answer for you. All right. This last one here. Being able to work well under pressure. Whew. All right, you just were given a project today. And you've got one day to turn it around because I need some budget information. Budget's due tomorrow. I just found out today, so I need you to help me. Somebody got to go play soccer. Somebody got to be picked up after school. And you got to get it done by 5.30 because you know you got to leave. What do you do? What do you do? It's due tomorrow morning at 8.30. You're going to stay up late. That's for sure. But it's prioritizing. Yes, who said that? You got to prioritize. And it's not that you have to make a choice between your extracurricular activities and your job. It's all about how are you going to do each of those effectively? Because I need it at 8.30 in the morning. That's not gonna change. You're gonna be faced with situations like that. Does anybody have any questions on that? Is this making sense to you? Yes. Fantastic. Questions on any of these? Yes, sir. Is there anything that you come up with a list like this is the one to 
important things that you have to test your life? Oh, absolutely. My daughter's 18 now. Now, I've been with the Weather Channel for 14 years. So she was like four years old when I started there. So I got to get to daycare. But I still got to get that project done by 8.30 in the morning. So I do my family stuff. As Soon as she goes to bed, I'm back online. I got to get it done. Or I get somebody else to pick her up and I go ahead and stay and get it done. You have to be able to figure out the best way because your boss has designated you as the one to do it. So you've got to figure it out. It's all about prioritizing and you've got to figure out which is the most important. Now, I'm not saying forego your family, but there were other people that, in my instance, I could call and say, hey, can you pick her up? I got something I got to do. Keep her for a couple of hours, and I'll be there to put her in the bed. So you got to figure it out. OK? Any other questions? Yes, sir. I have a quick question for you. Like, you know, when, when, you, when you're looking at different candidates, you know, no one is perfect. They won't, you won't find you know, perfection in every candidate right there. It's for, like, from your individual hiring standpoint, what is the most important thing for you at, at, when you're doing hiring in your in your field? Number one. Communication skills? Yes, sir. Because my interview questions are structured that I look for certain skills in my questions. Now, people hate interviewing with me. I only ask you like five questions. <laughs> and depending on how you answer those questions, I've got skill sets behind them that tell me whether or not you can do this job. That's most important. And actually, you stole my thunder because I was going to ask the group which one out of all of these do you think is the most important. And communication skills is the number one because you have got to be able to articulate yourself, whether it's written, verbal, or working, communicating instructions to team members, things of that nature. And you've got to be able to articulate in front of executive management. You got to be able to do it. Okay, any other questions on that? All right, here we go. Yes. Okay, all right, well, let me just hit these two things. Social media. Whether you know it or not, your character, personality, and a company's hiring decision are reflected on that. If you use Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those other ones, and let's just say for an example, you're out having a good time partying with your friends, and you were like, oh, let's do a selfie, click, and you post it on Facebook and forget about it. Please understand that hiring managers are using social media to make a decision as to whether or not to hire people. If you don't remember anything else, please remember that, okay? Let me show you one other thing. I'll make this presentation available to you to share with them. I want to show you This is one other thing I want to mention right here. If you are a student, right now you should be working on one or more of these types of networking. Social networking we just covered. Let's talk about personal networking and executive. Personal networking is what I call your personal board of directors. You need to have your FA5, and I'm talking about or FAVE 3, people that you can call when you are in a situation and you have to bounce ideas off of them to get guidance and support, you need to have that. From an executive networking standpoint, you need to make sure you connect with executives that can bark your name out when it comes down to hiring. Because they may not can hire you in their group, but they may know Joe over in IT who has a position and you're looking for an IT position, they can say, hey, William is a great candidate for that. You need somebody 
to sound your name. Does that make sense to you? And from a business networking perspective, that's if you have your own business and you are looking, looking to connect in the industry that you're working within and you need new opportunities, that's what that's about. Same thing, it's connecting with people, okay? And I wanna just show you this. Uh, how do I get to the end? Okay, go backwards. Uh, well, no, I want to keep going. Let me go. Networking is very important for you guys right now as you're preparing for your careers because if you don't do it now, if you were to ask me, Jocelyn, when was the last time you updated your resume? I will tell you, I update my resume every quarter. So if I'm ever in a position, oh, there we go. If I'm ever in a position where someone says, do you have your resume? I pull out a flash drive and say, show me the nearest computer and I can send it to you right now. Okay, this book, you need to write this down. The Five Book, it's a short, quick read, but this book questions you and where you're trying to decide where you want to be five years from now. And as potential college graduates, you want to know where you want to be five years from now. This is a good book for you to get, okay? I also want you to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's my ID and that's my email right there. I am available to answer any questions that you guys may have in anything work-related. I'll be more than happy to help you. When you link in with me, please put Clayton State University in the body of the text so that I'll know that I saw you here and I'll connect with you immediately. I just prolong it when I don't know the people. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me? I mean, I'll stay around for a little bit if you have questions and answer them, but I thank you for having me here and I'm sorry that we had to keep moving because I can, I can go. I do get the mug. Wow. Thank you. I'll put it on my desk. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Thank you guys very much. I enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm, I can hang around if you want to ask me any questions. Okay? We're going to be doing our door prizes, and then Jonathan will be available for you to talk. So we're going to have drawings. Can you read them at the same time? Can we trust you? Trust me. Get out your tickets. It's going to be a Home Depot. Huh? As many as I can get. All right, indeed. Ready? Yes. I have nine, six, one, three. Last four. Nine, six, one, three. Got to be here to win it. Nine, six, one, three. Next one I have is nine. Okay. I think I'll show you the message first. It's a pad folio. So the pen, no pen, no, but it's pen. It says College of Business on it. Okay. I have 9673. 9673. Oh. All right. This one here is a gold chain. Even though I can tell it's wrapped up, I know what it is. It's a keychain. Wing number is nine six six six.
And this one's a good one with a clear liquid and ice. Doesn't have to be coffee, but it is a coffee mug and it says College of Business on it with the logo on it. Next one is 9677. Seven. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Are you really serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's enough. Do we trust her for that one? I think she made it up. Last time she gave it back. I did. I'm not even going to go back. That's for your own thing. Another pad folio. I have nine, Ooh, six, <laughs> three, two. All right. Okay. Make this a class and you'll impress your, your professor. Huh? Hey. <laughs> Alright, the next one we got is paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, raise your hand, please. You know who I'm talking to. Alright, it's the last one. Okay. Nine, six, one, eight. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Thanks for coming.